Good day, YouTuber. My name is Stefan Duplessis. I am currently an honor student in mechanical engineering at the University of Pretoria. For the subject Fracture Mechanics, it is required of a student to present an academic paper to his fellow classmates and lecturer. It gives me great honor to present the paper Self-Healing Structural Composite Material, written by Kessler, Sotos and White. The article can be found online at sciencedirect.com. On the slide, a few examples of where composite structures are used is given. With composite structures being increasingly used, several techniques have been developed to repair damages. However, these conventional repair methods are not effective for healing invisible microcracks within the structure itself. In response, the concept of self-healing materials was proposed in the 1980s as means of healing invisible microcracks to extend the working life and safety of a polymeric component. A composite is the combination of two or more materials with different properties that are combined together to form a new material with better properties. In this presentation, a composite refers to the mixture of carbon fiber with an epoxic resin. To create a material that automatically heals, a self-healing agent is within a brittle vessel to create a microcapsule that is incorporated into the composite matrix. These capsules fracture upon loading, releasing the low viscosity self-healing agent to react with the catalyst, subsequently curing and filling of the microcrack. The exact nature of the self-healing approach is dependent on the nature and location of damage, the type of self-healing agent, and the influence of operational environment. For the experiment, a worth taper double cantilever beam was used. It was first introduced by Mastovi and has been used by many investigators to measure mode 1 interlaminar fracture toughness. By applying standard beam mechanics together with linear elastic fracture mechanics to the delamination along the mid plane, the stress intensity factor of the specimen can be expressed by the equation. Where K is the intensity factor, P is the applied load, K is the taper ratio with A and B being dimensioned, V is the poison ratio, H is the specimen's half thickness. The only unknown in this equation is the load applied, and thus the stress intensity factor is directly related to the critical load during crack pop propagation. For the experiment, carbon fiber reinforcement was combined with an epoxic polymer to fabricate the composite material. The epoxy consisted of epon, acamine, and heloxy, which is a flexibilizer that improves toughness and crack growth stability. Grubb's catalyst was used to react with the healing agent to provide a ring opening methanesis polymerization of diclopendine and produce a tough, highly cross linked polymer. The healing agent that was used is diclopendine monomer. The healing agent was encapsulated in a polyuframane haldite by in-suit polymerization to yield microcapsules with a mean diameter of 166 nanometers. Three types of specimens were manufactured. A reference sample with the absence of a healing agent or catalyst. A self-activated sample with Grubbs catalyst embedded in the epoxic polymer matrix. And a self-healing sample with microcapsules, the healing agent and a catalyst embedded in the composite matrix. The reference and self-active specimen serve as an experiment control and healing of this, these samples consist of some manual interference. For the self-healing samples, healing is triggered automatically. The samples were then subjected to failure while recording the load applied and crack displacement. The crack was allowed to displace 100 millimeters. After virgin loading, one of the following actions were taken dependent on the sample type. For reference specimen, the healing agent is manually catalyzed and then injected into the delamination. For the self-activated specimen, the catalyst is embedded within the polymer matrix and the healing agent is manually injected into the delaminate. For the self-healing specimens in which the microcapsules and catalysts are embedded into the polymer matrix and healing is automatic. For the self-healing, two sample groups were tested where one was left to yield at room temperatures and the other at an elevated temperature of 80 degrees. 
After the action had been completed, the delaminate was clamped closed and left for 48 hours to heal. After the samples were healed, they were reloaded to failure again while recording load and track displacement. A typical virgin load displacement graph is shown. The behavior is linear until crack propagation starts at about 49 newtons. Upon further displacement, the crack advances in short, unstable jumps as reflected in the jagged low displacement curve. This behavior is typical for a brittle composite. The initial fracture toughness is calculated from the peak load before unstable crack propagation starts, as displayed by the sudden drop in load level. The degree of healing can be quantified by the healing efficiency, which is the ratio of healing over virgin. Due to the unstable crack propagation, the average of the peaks and maximum peaks are used to quantify values to be compared to each other. The reference specimen serves as an experimental control and provides an upper bound of the potential degree of healing in a fully self-healing system. The healing agent is mixed with a catalyst and then mainly injected into the delaminated area. The area of healing agent and chemical triggers of polymerization are optimized under these conditions and the degree of healing that is achieved is maximized. While the initial crack growth begins earlier for the healed case, when compared to the virgin loading cycle, the maximum load is actually higher during crack advancement. The self-activated specimen which contains the catalyst alone shows a reduction in virgin toughness. Post-fracture observation of the delamination plane reveal evidence of agglomeration of catalyst particles. While the bonding of the catalyst particles is quite good, the core of the particle clusters is largely dry and indicates that the resin was not able to filtrate these clusters. Consequently, these clusters are weak in the fracture plane and lead to a lowering of the virgin toughness. To recover of the interlaminar fracture toughness in a delaminate cell healing structure, Composite, composite is accomplished at room temperature in an automatic fashion. While no manual interference, a recovery of nearly 50% is achieved. Upon elevating the temperature slightly to 80 degrees, healing efficiency is dramatically increased to over 80%. This dependency on high healing temperature indicates that the healing efficiency is quite sensitive to temperature. The reduction in virgin interlaminar toughness for the self-healing composite material is believed to be due to two effects. The increase in interlaminar thickness due to the size and concentration of microcapsules and the catalyst dis dispersion. High maximum concentration of 20% was used to assure that adequate healing agent was available at the site of delamination. As a result, the viscosity of the resin wa that was used was much higher and it was difficult to apply the resin with a single layer of capsules. The average thickness of the sample was 60% thicker compared to the reference. It is well known that the increased thickness of an interlaminar region leads directly to a lower, lower toughness. As a preliminary investigation on the effect of specimen width, a 10% by mass concentration of microcapsule was tested and it was found that the fracture toughness increased by 21% to 3.45 megapascal square root meter. This shows that the high concentration of microcapsule is responsible for the reduction in virgin fraction toughness. By lowering the catalyst concentration and improving the dispersion of the catalyst prior to composite layout, these effects can be mitigated. In addition, other order of dispersing the catalyst could prove beneficial, such as attaching the catalyst to the surface of the fiber or to the microcapsule itself. While the repair of large-scale delaminations have been shown to be feasible with the current material system, the target application of self-healing are on a much smaller scale. An important step forward in self-healing research is the development of small microcapsules distributed evenly through the matrix and the healing of, of to evaluate the healing under fatigue loading conditions. Small scale microcracks king that appears in the matrix phase under repeated mechanical loading eventually leads to large scale damages. Healing of microcracks could delay or prevent large scale damages in structural composites.